so yeah, I just finished an MSc uh, DIT or, or TUD um, into applied BIM, uh, and my paper was on assessing the viability of applying lean green and BIM. I mean, to Daniel's point earlier on, I think there's, there's crossovers in them all, similarities or, or there's benefits. My perception was there was benefits. So I wanted to investigate that, and I wanted to do it specifically to office fit out projects because it was mostly what I'm involved in. And a lot of what we talk about when we talk about BIM is building a massive road extension or building a hospital or building an airport. Um, like the slides that we saw from, from RPS down the stairs, and, and we don't talk about smaller, dirtier projects and, and whether it's applicable or not. So that's what I wanted to investigate. Um, so I just wanted to go through why why I thought that subject was relevant. I'm pleased to the, the, the converted about them, lead and wellness uh, in the lean process we've just spoken about. Um, the process that I went through for the research, what the outcome of the research was, summary of that. Um, and then what further research I, I perceive in the, the same arena. Um, so there's not a figure in Euro, so that's a UK figure. The, the office fit out market in the UK is 3.7 billion annually, so it's a large chunk of cash. Um, it's a big market. I know that some of the guys are here are involved in it day and daily. Um, and 69% of the projects, those fit out projects, are less than 1,000 a, a square metres. So they're quite small projects. Uh, so we're not talking about hundreds of thousands, whole office blocks, we're talking about going into an existing space and refurbing it. So a large, a large, large chunk of that, 3.7 billion, uh, is, is in small projects. So can we use BIM, should we use BIM, uh, should we link it to lean and to lead and to wellness, etc. So BIM, as we all know, um, is a process, it's not a piece of software, it's not a, a 3D model at the end of it. It's a process, or it should be used as a process from the start of a, a, a building all the way through its lifestyle. If we're doing an office refurb type project, we're going to jump in in the middle of that. We're still going to get through the same steps um, for the process, but only within an existing space, potentially, that, that, that's already been built out. So, again, the technologies are down the stairs for the 3D scanning and the scene what's there as existing, um, or, or you just do it from a, a, a kind of traditional scale and model, etc. Um, but the renovation, this is for a new build obviously, the renovation piece is there and, and it goes on through the whole building's lifestyle, our life cycle, um, that it will be built, the building will stand for 50 years, it will be renovated maybe five or ten times over that period. So again, that, we're interested to see what we can do there. LEED, again, as you probably all know, uh, is, is a rating system, it's like BRIAM, it comes from the US. Uh, a lot of it is it's all buildings orientated, so it, it's, it's more to do with the building and the impact that the building will have on the environment. Uh, there's only so much you can do when you're going into an existing space because the, the building's already been built. Whatever the air conditioning system is, largely whatever the air conditioning system is, uh, there's only so much power. You can't affect the orientation of the building, so all of that's already catered for. But there is a specific process within LEED uh, for interior design and construction, uh, ID and C. Um, so it can still be applied. So we can still, if we're trying to drive down carbon, etc., which is all the, the talk at the moment, we can still have that effect in an office fit out. Uh, the next asset aspect, aspect as well, which is a newer system, that's it, very like LEED. <coughs> it's, I think it's 2014 or 2015. But whereas LEED is focusing on the building, uh, wellness is focusing on the people within the building. And again, a lot of it can be affected by the building as it's built, the orientation, the, the connectivity to public transport, um, the availability of natural daylight, etc. Which again, in an office fit out, we can't affect. But there are still a whole load of things that we can do inside the building and with the fit out of the building, with fresh air flow rates, with availability of water, with fresh fruit, etc. available on site. Uh, with the planning of the space in terms of access to natural daylight, etc. So again, as with LEED, there's an internal process uh, assessment for, for wellness. Lean, we've just talked about it ad nauseum uh, with Daniel. Again, it's a process, the process is inherently there uh, to create value for the customer um, and to maximise efficiency and to avoid vape waste uh, in, the, in the process. So again, we've spoken about that, but 
I personally don't feel that there's any contradiction between lean and BIM. I think they, they can run hand in hand. Lean is a process that can be applied to the BIM process to make it more efficient and, and maximise efficiency and to lose waste, etc. So that's lean, just a quick overview. So the research process was a qualitative analysis, was it me, uh, of a whole load of <laughs> previous papers. So, I mean, there are, there are a lot of papers on BIM and LEAD. There are, uh, there are a lot of papers on BIM and LEAN. There are a lot of papers, there are fewer papers, I suppose, in BIM and GREEN, and there are very few papers in BIM and WELL. But there are no papers with them all joined together. So there was a load of reading across the different subjects, uh, and then I did interviews with all of these good guys, including Fergus there, uh, who gave us a whole load of decent feedback across the industry. So there's, there's fit out contractors there, there's ME contractors there, there's FM uh, operators there, there's, there's consultants, architects, ME, etc., and then there's the FM guys. So. It was a good kind of broad section, not a massive pool perhaps, but it was okay for what we were doing. Yeah. So the outcome of that um, was essentially, I mean, all of the papers essentially say that lead can be supported by BIM. A lot of the lead credits that you need to take off areas of carpet or areas of length of refrigerant pipe with insulation on, or what, there's a whole lot of quantitative information that you have to put into the lead application uh, or calculation. Uh, so LEED is well supported by the BIM, even just the BIM model, never mind the BIM process. Well is a similar set of assessments, again LEED is, is, is for the building, well is for the people. So well, similar set of processes, it can be supported directly, manually, by taking information out of the model. And then LEAN, as we've spoken about again, can be supported by BIM through the process of clash detection, through the process of 4D modelling, you can identify waste, you can avoid clashes, you can avoid issues on site. And I mean, those images there are maybe not all that clear. This is a paper from these chaps down the bottom here, where they specifically allocated um, parameters within Revit, Autodesk Revit, uh, to well and to lead, and identified what, what they could do there to um, uh, improve or directly inform the lead and the well process. And, and out of the requirements, 65% of them, the requirements for leading well can be supported directly from the Revit model. Um, there's another 27 that they can't do, it's more uh, analysis, uh, not with the software. So Revit 21% or 21 aspects, sorry, uh, 17 from Revit plus some other bits of software, uh, and then so 65% overall. So they've proven that that can work, yeah? So so that's, that supported my, my research, yeah? Um, Again, through through the discussions and through some of the papers, we felt that it was uh, the, the feedback was it felt it was essential to appoint a champion to have somebody that was knowledgeable in BIM and in lead and in well and or so it had to be somebody to draw all that together, or it had to be somebody that could could cover all the bases with some kind of knowledge on it, so that you weren't trying to apply four different things at four different times uh, in four different ways. Yeah, there had to be some kind of coordination on it. So appoint a champion. Uh, take a people and process view and select the technologies to support them. So I think again there was a there was a an instance where everything would be pushed or you should use this software, you should use that. So it, and it, maybe it was a sales thing, I, I don't know. But I think you have to sit down and say on this project what do we need to make it better that we don't just use the same stuff all the time because it's uh, it, it's what we do and somebody sold it to us, that you have to say, well in this specific project this is what we need. And maybe through that you, you'll get to a standard model, but in the next point you need to start with a pilot project. Project. I don't think that anyone really knows pulling those four things together, BIM, lead well and lean at the same time, what's the best way to do it yet. Yeah. Um, and then develop an integrated process flow. So we have a lead process, we have a BIM process, we have a process to achieve well and to achieve lead, etc they all have to be integrated into one process so that we're not trying to follow four different things at the same time. Um, and then to take a life cycle view of the whole project as opposed to just looking at it from a construction perspective or a design perspective or an energy perspective to, to look at it from a whole life cycle point of view. 
Um, so for future research, uh, the, from, from my research into paper, etc., that there wasn't enough case studies. I don't think there was any real case studies, certainly of applying the four things at one time. There were some case studies of applying some of them, and certainly, particularly the contractors we spoke to had a good bit of experience in it, but none of it was written down and documented. Um, the process application and improvement, I, again, I think that there's a BIM process which we all know which is very document heavy and very uh, heavy in terms of the process itself, I think that can be leaned. Yeah, we can apply lean to that and, and, and reduce a lot of waste and make it a, a lot more streamlined. Uh, Post-occupancy evaluation, that there is very little paperwork written on what happens after we all leave site. Yeah, we said it was going to run this much energy. We said that the temperature was going to be X. We said that the CO2 quantity was going to be Y. We said that everyone was going to be happy in their space and the space was going to be utilised to 80 or 90 per cent. There's very little research to say if it has or it hasn't been done. If we have achieved that, we all disappear off site and go on to the next project. And there's nothing built into the contracts to make us go back and do that. So I think that, that needs a bit of research and, and applying. Uh, I know it's in the soft landings, um, but nobody does it. We've, we've had it in contracts before and it's the first thing they take out because they can't quantify it. And then the IoT, Internet of Things, what can that do um, to support post-occupancy evaluation, but also just to support the running of the building uh, for the benefit of the client, yeah? Um, for the summary then, so BIM supports lead, lean and well initiatives, yeah? Again, it doesn't contradict them. It's not the same process. It shouldn't be supplanted, but it supports them. Um, it's most efficient when they're all used at the same time. So again, I think there's a bit of thought. We're maybe all struggling to apply BIM, we're maybe all struggling to apply Lean, but I think if there's a conscious effort to apply them all, they should all be applied at the same time to get the maximum benefits. And then further benefits can potentially be gained through the integration of IoT, and that's again onto the post-occupancy evaluation stuff. So I think I'm just about bang on time. Any questions? Thank you.